Hello and welcome to the vlog. It's going to be an interesting couple of days. Today I need to get through Stoke-on-Trent. That's about nine miles and six locks. So by the end of today, I should be placed pretty much nearly at the southern end of the Hare Castle Tunnel. And more about that one later. That will be tomorrow's challenge. There's a little bit of greenery to get through before we enter the outskirts of Stoke and all the urban clutter that implies. Despite being in the middle of nowhere, there's a train station behind those trees, and the reason for it will become apparent in a moment. Let's just get past these boats and all will become clear. There it is, the Wedgwood Pottery Factory. For my overseas viewers, Stoke and the area around it is known as the Potteries, because so many world-famous ceramics brands are here, like Port Merion, Dalton, or my mum's absolute favourite, Moorcroft. But the only one I saw from the canal is Wedgwood, and they do factory tours for a fee. Not related to pottery, but is that a llama? Having passed the Wedgwood factory, I'm about to come up to the first lock of the morning. It's 11 feet 11 inches deep, so it's a big one. And what's more, as you can see, it's set at a slightly odd angle to the canal, so you have to go round a bit of a corner to get into it. The lock's full, so start by opening the paddles to empty it. Check the boat is still attached on its centre line. Good. Watch the water going down. Very turbulent down there. Quite what the fish reckon to locks, I can only imagine. Must be a bit of a terrifying theme park ride to them. And then, with a bit of welly on the throttle and a bit of hard right on the rudder, it's an easy in. With that lock done, it's now about four, four and a half miles straight on through Stoke until we get to the next one. Before we get to Stoke itself, we go through Trentham, part of the Stoke suburbs, I suppose. This presumably was once a bridge. And then, continuing north, you leave Trentham, which is largely behind those trees on the left. It's a bit tenuous, I know, but I rather like the contrast between the modern industrial chimney in the foreground and the historic church spire in the distance. Yep definitely coming into an urban environment, but look, they have thoughtful and helpful graffiti here. It is quite low, perhaps a foretaste of what's to come in the Harecastle Tunnel. A bit further along, and these seats or tables on the left are rather ingenious, being made out of train wheels and undercarriage as far as I can tell. At this point, I was definitely reminded of going into Birmingham last year. Lots of busy roads around, lots of graffiti. You're clearly not in Kansas anymore. Ah, that's the chimney building. Ten points to anyone who can tell me what they do in there. See that concrete wall holding the side of the canal up? As you look closely, doesn't seem terribly solid, and it does look rather old. I had visions of it all collapsing in on me as I went past, which was lovely. There was a poor tally of only two traffic cones as I went through Stoke. This was the first. Under this bridge is a little boatyard, rather oddly called Dolphin Discount, with no sign of any dolphins, sadly but it did have an unusual narrowboat up on the hard standing. And where else to put an air rifle range but a boatyard? It is an unusual assortment they do here. The church, I discovered, is Stoke Minster, which has links back to the 7th century. There's been almost no boat traffic all day, so of course I meet another one at a narrow bit under a bridge. There you go, 
potteries. Right, let's gear up for the first of the Stoke flight of locks. Yes, there is a lock there, it's under that bridge, honest. Through that one, and the next presents itself, hidden again behind a bridge, this one carrying the railway. And the next, at which there was an early morning drunk hanging around with a can of lager, but he didn't even seem to notice me, definitely in a little world of his own. And if you thought that prior bridge was good practice for Harecastle, this one tests your limbo skills. Good thing I took the stove chimney off this morning. Call me weird, maybe, but I like cemeteries. Just fascinating places with so much hidden history. Another lock at a peculiar angle. Yes, under that bridge on the left there. It looks more awkward than it really is. That said, getting off the lock landing so that you're lined up for the lock itself without wishing to thump this old working boat on the way in demands a little pivoting off the nose, reversing and then heading in. And finally the last of the Stoke flight. They're all deep locks, but this one particularly so. Bear in mind, if you're solo like me, you need to clamber up the lock side from the boat roof using the ladder set into the wall. And it is wet and slippery, this one also covered in grass and slime just to make things a bit more fun. At the top of the lock, at a place called Etruria, which sounds like the land of pixies, goblins and orcs to me, there is the junction with the Calden Canal. That's perhaps a better view, the Calden on the left, the Trenton Mersey on the right and filling the frame. In that building in the centre is the only remaining steam-driven potter's mill in the world, apparently. Press pause now if you want to read through this sign. Lots of history here, in fact, with this forge a relatively modern building, but the skill of that trade dating back 150 years at the site. There's also a Canal and River Trust maintenance yard here, plus lots of facilities for boaters, including waste skips, a water point, an L-sand point, pump-out machine, and I think toilets and showers too. This is the first bit of the Calden Canal, next to those facilities. As you can see, a CRT workboat, some moorings and an island in the middle with a statue on it. It's James Brindley, the legendary canal pioneer and engineer. Slightly further down, there's a pretty little footbridge next to a winding hole. That's a place where you can turn a boat around. Confusingly, this building also claims to be the museum. So which one actually houses the old mill, I have no idea. Anyway, let's press on and go past some more well-tended gardens looking splendid in the sun. There's a big hire fleet base up ahead. That's one of their boats on the right, which is about to be shown to a hirer. You see a lot of their boats around, they've got bases all over the country. And this is their marina, with pub on site too. Quite a tight blind bend under the bridge at the end, in the traditional canal way, a surprise round every corner. Gently round and, after this next blind corner, you're heading into a slightly more countryside feel, although in fact the area is surrounded by buildings and industry. Here is the site of what was the Burslem Arm, a campaign to restore which is now underway. More pottery. It is rather a theme round here, unsurprisingly. And they're very keen on us boaty types. Slightly frustrating that in all this concrete there's no mooring rings. 
This little bridge belongs to the Steelite company, it seems. You might say that makes it a Steelite span. Here's Longport Wharf with all the usual stuff for boaters. Looks like some kind of trip boat in for service. And one of the well-known boat builders is here too. Believe it or not, we are heading for a very scenic spot next to a water park, though it may not feel like it at the moment. That's nicer. Just need to negotiate this line of fishermen. They do generally pull their lines out of the way just in time. And here's where I'll pull in, just after these geese and their young. Cheerio!